Good. I'm good, man. Here hey. we are, Jungle Beats. We're here. Doing our first classic album review, and it is Freddie Gibbs and Mad Libs Pinata. But yeah, we, we, uh, you know, you asked for it a lot last year and with Bandana on the rise set to drop this month, we thought we'd get on it. I mean, I'm already a huge fan of this album. This was a lot, but Sandy here. I've never heard, heard it. Never heard it. I, I bet a lot of you guys talk very highly of it. And so we're here about to review our first classic review. These will always come up early on our patreon.com forward slash jungle beats. And if you do want to have a power in seeing which classic albums we review, then you got to become a patron. Three dollars, you can vote. Eh, not bad. We've been trying to do this more often. Because no, no one's just dropped this year, hence why we've been a bit quiet. Like, we, we definitely want to, you know, have more time ourselves and review some of the biggest stuff that she, she ain't been dropping. Absolutely. She ain't been dropping. But for now, I'm Alexander Sandalis. I'm uh, Red Rubik's uh, arisen from the, the seventh underground layer of the subterranean. Uh, solar system and together we are jungle beats australia's plug to the fairness reviews in the country 100 when was this made uh 2013 i think there's a player in Scarface there mm -hmm. had this like grungy underground street vibe like New York style East Coast style what are you feeling? this is fully Madlib man Madlib just has those that weird continuing bass and just the, the way that he does things man you just can kind of pick up he's very unique with the way he does shit yeah and uh Bucky has a really dope opener and you'll soon see that like the way that they sort of just it flows it's just effortlessly did you tell them that you heard this before? yeah yeah that's all alright they aware Nice. That's a cut out. Oh, what sample is that? I don't know. That's pretty. Yeah, man, that's, that's phenomenal. That's one of the best, man. Is it? I mean, this track's this album's got a lot of the best, honestly. <laughs> There's so many good fucking tracks. The pro. The sample, I don't know where to start, man. Freddy or the sample. The storytelling yeah. is so fluent and the video complements that perfectly. Absolutely. The beat, the sample from Mad Lib is just, it just, you just like. But Freddie Gibb has this effortless style of flowing and storytelling mm. that just captures you. Mm -hmm. And with the music video, I love how they ran it back and they, they showed it what happened if he didn't hit the guy and start a fight, you know, mm -hmm. something just depicting like what we want to do versus what we actually do. That's Bro. dope, man. I gotta listen to that again. Man, he legit can sound good on any beat. Him and Danny Brown, to me, are the two most versatile rappers in the Speaking game. Speaking of... Mm -hmm. That's true, though. They're the, to me, they're both the most versatile rappers to rap on beats in the game. And we can see that through from Freddie's discography, like, versatility man. is there. He's done trap albums. He's done you know, albums like this. He's done more... What's the what's stuff in his past? He's done more boom bap albums. He's done kind of more heavy drum heavy albums. So he's kind of he's fucked around a lot, man.
Uh, I love that. Bro. Hey, the Mad Lib sounds very Kanye inspired. Well, unless Mad Lib's older than Kanye. Like college dropout era? Is Mad Lib older than Kanye? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh shit, so maybe Kanye inspired by Mad Lib. Maybe. I'm so impressed. I want to speak about Danny Brown first because typically going from Atrocity Exhibition to this, I'm getting a Danny Brown that's a lot more rhythmic and a bit softer. It, it, it kind of just a bit different than I'm used to hearing it, but I like it. So, it's, um, so when this released Atrocity, that's four year gaps. You can kind of see Danny there to, because this is like pretty early Danny from my, I think that's when he released Old right. around that sort of era. So. But fuck yeah, he, he flows so beautifully on that. And Freddie Gibbs is like, he just, he's, he's the same man. He he's just, so consistent. Yeah, man. It's like water, man. Formless. Great production once again. Really fucking effective hook. And the switch up of the yam to close it out. It's well, just a really dope track. And showcasing again how Mad Lib is being able to cohesively tie every track in so well. Like mm. it all sounds, has such a beautiful flow. Bruh. Genius. This is back in the day where albums were typically always long, right? Yeah. It makes sense. Thank God they ain't anymore. That's my roots. Let me rep them. Uh... Yeah. <laughs> You know what this song is? This is driving. 100% man. I'm just driving. How you doing? Yeah. Uh. It's also just a home where he's cooking something up on the stove, just flipping some pancakes. I'm not even paying attention to the lyrics, even though we talked uh, a, a moment or two of, through the song. But it, I think that's interesting because you don't really listen to lyrics too much when you're just driving and cruising. You know, you're just chilling sometimes. Yeah, it depends. I feel like that reflects yeah. that. Not always. Well, it depends who you are. Some people have, can focus on those things. I can't. If right. I'm driving, I'm focusing on driving. Lyrically, we haven't really dove into much of the concepts he's exploring here. What mm. do you remember that you didn't from your first listen that you would kind of impress upon me that we're hearing here? Like overall? Overall and with this track, do you recall anything in particular? Um, are we touching on concepts that I'm missing and that we need should be speaking about? Not really, man. I mean, you know me and lyrics. We go hand in hand. Yeah, so. but you heard this album many times. I've heard this album many times, but still, it's still? just like, it's just a feel album for me, man. Okay. Because I'm a production head. This album just flows for me, and Freddie just does the thing. I think there's like a few tracks, like, uh, I guess, is this Deeper that we just heard? Duggan's probably another one that has a pretty good story. So there's a few tracks where I, I kind of get the gist of, but the rest are just feel, man. Like, like you said, this is just a driving track for me. Okay. Oh, I like that. Fuck the new talking. I leave their thoughts on my shoestring because you're gonna kick the head in. I like that. Bomb. I was paying a little more attention to the lyrics and, and mm. paying attention to his uh his wordplay. I think that's that's what I'm we're probably missing a bit, or I'm probably missing a bit here I'm is that clever it, wordplay with the shoelaces on the on the on the on the thoughts line and the. He's fucking with it. You know, it's like it's like a fight. It's like it's like a it's like a martial art fight where you just it's like Muhammad Ali. Just this is what. His lyrics feel like when he's flowing, Freddie Gibbs. It feels like, you know, Ali, see him like doing the... This is what it feels like. It's like Freddie Gibbs is dodging and ducking. What they say? <laughs> Move like a... Sting like a... Nah, float like a butterfly. Fuck! Sting like a bee. That's what it feels like Freddie's flow is, and then it's just... Delivered... So... Amazingly. <clears throat> Pussy for six minutes, 
This is like you're walking down like an alleyway getting ready for a fight. Like everyone's like parking you up, people are patting you on the back and you're just like, right. I'm like, I'm Look at that beat. It's like you're training for the boss. Exactly, you're training for the big, the big fight. You're not in the fight yet, but you're nearly there. Oh. He doesn't stop. Yeah. There was no, no pause. I can hit 50 cent on this, like early 50 cent. Absolutely. This is like wankster. That's interesting. The tonality is like wankster, but I haven't heard Mad Lib go on this type of tonality a bit on more this faster album. Pace. A bit more faster pace, a bit more higher pitch. I feel a hunger by Freddie Gibbs on this. You know, this seems like it's before he really popped off. Is that right? This is when he popped off. When This is the album that did it for him? I mean, I think he popped off on BFK. If you weren't you familiar, Babyface Killer, really good album for him. And then he sort of like albums like ESGM, which is like his label and stuff. So he, he put out a lot of music, man. But I feel like this is the album where the world noticed he popped off. Because I noticed he popped off earlier, but this is definitely his best album still, in my opinion. I think I feel that. I feel this hunger. I feel this energy. Mm. I feel this grittiness. I feel the rawness with youth and like not a lot of, mm. not a whole lot of experience, even though he did have quite a bit of experience, but you, you feel that. Also, I think the Mad Lib just really knew how to bring him out the best on this yeah, album. Because you listen great. to some of his other albums, and Freddie Gibbs okay. experimenting with different stuff, like be it voice layer, be it different production, and it doesn't always work. He always manages to do good on anything, but he doesn't necessarily fit it as best he does on this album. Mad Lib just really knows how to bring the best out of him, not only through him rapping, but just through an overall sound. So I think it's very well said. Mm, yeah. That's so dope, that so jacket. Dope. Oh my god. Is that where it all started? Is that real? Is that where he's actually recording this? I reckon, man. He's spoken through a lot of his albums, through his music, about how he was raised and how he actually like did a lot of did a lot of dumb and bad shit like while trying to make it in music. Mm. And he got to a stage where I don't think he necessarily believed that he could do it, but he just kind of he realized, oh shit, I can kind of break out of it sort of thing from all the other shit he was doing. Break out of the the, the, the crime, the violent yeah, habits. Well, that's kind of just like what he grew up with and what was making the bank to do rap, so. I don't think he's depicting it there. You know, this reminds me, I don't know because I haven't heard of a lot of his discography, but this seems and feels like Freddie Gibbs' version of Get Rich or Die Trying. Like 50 Cent, Get Rich, that's his, first, that's his big... Zach, you kind of feel that? Yeah, this is Freddie Gibbs' best album. And the album that, the, like I said, the world sort of knows, oh shit, this artist has got something. But it also showcases the roots, the origins, where he came mm. from, the, the violence, the crime, the aggression, all of that associated behavior and feeling. I can and do that, that production. Bruh, come it's, on. The whole way through, like, I just, you, you got like tingles and like, you, you just, you just, you're kind of floating. <laughs> Oh. Is this before 2013? That was a track I was probably didn't engage me the most that felt more of the same. But the switch up is what caught my most attention mm. after that one minute mark. I love that shit. Like, uh, even though with the switch up, even though like you said, like it's kind of the same, same sort of beat, but like Madlib's doing his thing on there. And Freddie just, I think it's because like, you've kind of already heard a track maybe similar to this, but they still maybe. do it so well. Right. So. Yeah, not to take away from the quality, just my attention. <laughs> Tension will start. It's got that wavering. Mm. 
Since you really found out what I was about My radiation occupation invading the nigga house But it's probably be murdered for some shit that I said I be a legend, I'm just motherfucker breathing the dead But y'all hear me, these up with these bitches They all tell me fuck my You could hear so many great features on tracks like these Who can you hear on this one? Jay-Z, DMX. I'm just so impressed about how they can maintain this quality. You know, you get albums where you, it wanes, it dips, it flows. They've kept this supreme quality the whole time. Mm -hmm. that's, that's definitely one of the, the big things like you've noticed there. Like so many albums just do of this length and they'll just be the one or two or three or four fillers. But Mad Lib's just keeping it, keeping it at that level the whole way because through. Because if, if he sets the bar here, Freddie has to meet him. Mm -hmm. That's what I feel. We got your boys on Domo Genesis L sweatshirt on Robes next track. Ooh boy. That's my boy Doms. I'm surprised to hear this guitar. We haven't heard a guitar. Yeah, and they're kind of live ones as well. They're not like, you know. Yeah, more live instrumentation. Very live on this track. How young does L sound here? He would have been young. Teenager or something. Like the father I never had on no season. Still deep. This is what people would call a smoking track. Makes sense. Stick to the dicks and balls that you used to, bitch. The fuck is this? After listening to Freddie, the track where he sings, you know he's got a bit of a sense of humor. Yeah, it's good. Okay, now I remember what the track was. <laughs> I forgot what the track will sound like. Go ahead. I was gonna say, it's, every track that's happening, I keep thinking about different artists that be in that track, but they're always different artists. What? Like, you know, you imagine Jigger on one of the tracks and Kanye yeah, on track. Yeah. Like, I'm picturing the same, but it's different artists every time. Like I can picture someone like Method Man on this track, which it flows so beautifully on there. It seemed like, speaking of the of the features, it seemed like uh, Madlib was putting. He may have altered the production to suit Domo and Earl better. Do you feel that? Do you disagree? What do you think? No, I feel like he just. I think Madlib made this beat and just realized that it would be good for Domo, and I don't think it particularly okay. made around that because okay. he, he knows that Earl and uh, Domo were largely inspired by Madlib's music growing up. They're big fans of MF Doom. MF Doom's worked really close with Madlib over time. So I think like uh, Madlib just developed a good relationship with them and saw a good opportunity to put them on the album. Because it does have a different vibe and energy oh, to compare to the rest of the album. Slightly more jazzy in a sense. Something like that. It's, it's just lighter. Like, it's, it's prettier. Yeah, it's really, you just real zone the fuck out. Why I zone the fuck out. Why wouldn't they feature Scarface on the track Scarface? They fucked up, didn't they? At a pr prime opportunity. Is that Donald Glover? It does sound like it would be that. Yeah, he could do that. Definitely exploring some softer, more, how do you say, production. Melodic? Melodic. Know. There you go. Yeah, I love the really low violins underlaying all that track. And then just know. the sort of like, sort of comedic. The third. Right. How you doing? I think Scarface was a really good uh, feature on there too. Really suited it. Came with uh, some good lyricism that was very similar to what Freddie was saying. So. It was good. Oh! It's like an anthem track. Bruh. Mm. Oops, sorry, sir. Oh, I love that. That's the feature, I'm pretty sure. Polyester Man. Solo! It's a ninth wonder shit right there. 
very, I feel like this album is closing out with this very melodic style compared to the first three quarters or first half. Slower, more tempo. It's been more, a bit more zone out -y. Right, zone out Dictionary.com. Ever so much the wordsmith. So easy just to vibe the fuck out for that yeah, one. Yeah, at this stage in the album, I think that's where we're at. It's beautiful production though. I feel like Freddie just kind of like doesn't try and go too crazy with this one. He really just kind of softens it up. He's he's not yeah he's not doing too much. He's allowing the production to flow with him mm. rather than against him. It's like the ocean. He's now fighting it. He's just floating. He's just caught in that rip current and he's happy to just let it take him to to Pound Town. Pound Town. Oh man, I forgot how much this album puts me in like a trance. Back in the booth, man. And it seems like a continuation almost. Yep. Well, this was shot after a thugging video, so. There you go. Look at that computer. So old. Yeah, because you always try it before you buy it to make sure it's good. Oh, she's a buyer, not a, not a... That's a fat ass joint. It's blunt. Oh, gosh, it's beautiful. That's BJ. Yeah, oh, I forgot he was on here. Talking about the walk of shame, I'm wondering if he's talking about the, the women. Yeah, I'm sure that's what it's referencing as well. Like, I think what BJ's trying to demonstrate is that it doesn't have to be shameful. I think if you embrace her, if it's intentional, if it's what you want, kind of hard to hear him lyrically, but that's what I felt from the, the mm. energy. But that was, I think BJ had such a nice addition to that song right there. He did. It was just like a beautiful, beautiful little part there. And the music video story told well. I enjoyed this. All those music videos have been dope, man. Like it really adds a nice element. And it kind of, he puts it in a situation where it shows you that struggle and it shows you really what he went, like he had like, you know, the, the, the mattress in the room with like nothing else really around. Smoking a blunt every morning. It seems like he's, he's part of his life. Dealing drugs. And it's, it's true. A lot of people that do deal drugs, like, it can be easy for him to come across people to just have fun with the fuck because normally when you sell drugs, you have a lot of uh, money, a lot of left over. So you can give that little bit. And people will, will be happy to spend time with you and fuck you for drugs. So it becomes a lifestyle. Right. I don't understand what you'd be saying. <laughs> Get a clearer phone. A lot of kit cats on this joint. Is Gee whiz. Casey Veggies. Oh, it's Casey Veggies. Solomon. Michi Daco. Yeah, boy, Flavo Zombies. Mac Miller. Wait, you still use fucking torrents? Huh? You still use torrents? Yeah. What do you no mean? No one uses torrents anymore. How else am I supposed to get my shit? Stream. I was shocked that a man of your caliber and expertise and intelligence could be still using no, I like it. old technology. I like it. Uh. 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 You got bus? Ah! Uh. the bathroom. Oh, there he is. Please go solo. I want a solo album for him. That'd be dope. Mac Miller. <laughs> oh my god. Yeah, you know it. They actually put that they in. You know it. That's hilarious. It's got such a final finality tone to it as well with that fucking. Dun, 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 dun. That it's was stacked. Yeah. What's this now? Look, the reality is that track was absolutely stacked, and that is, as you said, a phenomenal way to finish this album. Mm. It's like the conductor was doing the final symbol clash of just like. That's and I find it fitting as well that Mac Miller closes out the album because 
Uh, Mad Lib has said after Mac Miller's passing that they had an album that they were working on together and it was fully finished, but they never finished mastering it. So Really? Yeah. So Mad, Mad Lib and Mac? Mad Lib and Mac. Whoa. So they do have an album that Mad Lib could release at some point. Because at first I was like, don't release it. You know, Mac's gone. Like Mac wouldn't want anything unfinished to be released. But then Mad Lib has said that it, they, they finished recording it all. So I'm thinking that maybe, maybe we'll get a Mad Lib Mac album. It would be would be amazing. Man, that's super interesting. I did not expect to hear that. Uh, considering only the thing that's done is mastering, that would be great. Uh, but who knows? We'll see. Um, well, Mad Lib is definitely someone who strives perfection. So he wouldn't release it unless he knew that it would be perfect and that Mac would want it to be released. Like, right. You've got to respect that. and honor his name. Mm -hmm. But in regards to this, Michi Dako just, he oh. stands out. How does he know? Like, not to take away from the other artists, oh. because they all flowed uh, very well on this track, mm. including Freddie, but damn. It's just, I think you said it really good before, like, the production that Madlib does, that there's no slacking, it's always at a high caliber. And the reason I think that this is known as a classic is because Freddie can match every single track with an energy that Madlib's looking for. Because many other artists out there couldn't match an energy for this many tracks in an album. I think maybe Jay-Z could be one that could do it. But there's not many artists that could keep up. That's why I think like Freddie and Danny Brown, once again, could be amazing artists. Because any producer they work with, they can, they can work at that high caliber. They can, they can mold their voices and their stories to fit anything. Because a lot of rappers out there, they'll listen to a beat and they won't feel inspired. They won't feel the need to write a story to it. They'll have to have a certain sound to match it. But these rappers, they can match anything. I think you articulated my question is why you consider this cl a classic and mm. you just answered it. Yep. Because many people may not consider it and you just answered them. Um, for me, I can see why. Because of that answer, because of the consistent caliber of quality, production, mm -hmm. super high quality, and delivery. Exactly. By Freddie. Freddie matches it. Because there's so many albums out there that I listen to personally where the production classic the whole way through for example asap rocky's testing i think the production the whole way through that is flawless but asap rocky can't hold the standard of keeping up to that track so it's not a classic there you go great example so there's so many albums out there where like for me uh danny brown's xxx it's a classic to me because he the production there is crazy and he keeps the standard the whole way through but that's like a lot of different producers so. and then just lastly i want to touch on there is a raw gritty energy that freddie delivers that is underground just hungry mm. vibe that i think really sets this home and yeah. gives you that home run his hunger on here is crazy man and that's yeah exactly so that's what yeah. i'm gonna finish with man i'm sorry thank we you. didn't i was gonna say thank you no thank you i, I, I want to apologize for not delving into this lyrically because i am very familiar with the album more like i said on a on a I listening feel. production and feel scale it's always yeah. had a special place in that regard and it's beautiful to listen to it again it's been probably two years since i've heard it and we'll definitely get on Bandana when it drops. That's why, especially where we want to do this album, because... Good precursor. Big precursor. So you bet you believe it when Bandana drops, we'll be on it. Let us know what classic albums you want to see below, but we're going to be picking from the comments which ones to vote on, which one we're actually going to be doing on our Patreon. So head to our Patreon if you want to have a hand in classic albums. Hey, uh, thanks, yeah. I'm going to go uh, give my friend a hand job now, and we ouchie. Oh, you want that hand job, man? <laughs>